Welcome. This is episode 64 of the Fiber by Design podcast. I'm Lydia. You can find me as Lydia B on Ravelry and as Lydia Knits on Instagram and Periscope. And then you can find my indie yarn company, Oloops, on Instagram as Oloops, um, Facebook, Twitter, in the Ravelry group, which is just called Oloops, and then also at my website, which is oloops.com. Wow, guys, can you believe it's November? I think it's insane that it's already November. Um, I just, it, it seems like the year has gone by quickly and October went so fast. Um, so before I jump in with my knitting, I just wanted to say hello and welcome to new and returning viewers. If you're new, thank you so much for taking a little bit of your time to check me out. Um, I hope that you see something that you enjoy, and if you do, then press the subscribe button so you'll be notified when my new episodes come back or come out. And if you're returning, welcome back. Good to see you guys. It's been two weeks since you saw me last, so I'm excited to show you guys what I've been working on. This is a fiber-related podcast um, where I show my knitting and my general craftiness and sometimes my indie yarn that I dye. Um, and I podcast in Spokane, where I live, Spokane, Washington, uh, where I live with my husband and our three kids and our five fur babies, which occasionally you guys might hear my dog barking. She's running around outside, so if you do, I apologize in advance. And I also apologize, guys, the lighting is not super great this week and that you can totally tell that's a blanket. <laughs> As I mentioned last time, this is a work in progress location. We are in the middle of remodeling. But I guess let's jump right in with the knitting, you guys. I have to admit, I haven't knit anything that isn't Christmas related. So if you were wanting to see non-Christmas related knitting, I don't have any. <laughs> soon. It'll all be over soon. There's only seven weeks left and I am I'm pushing to get it done. So I finished a couple things, which makes me happy. So with that said, I guess we'll jump right into Countdown to Christmas. And I'll show you guys what I've been doing. I'm going to show you what I finished first because I have finished three things, which makes me really happy. So we'll start with this first. Last week, I showed you guys this hat that I was working on for my niece, Bryony. And this is the Be Mine hat by me. And it is knit on Super Bulky. I had finished this bottom portion and most of that when you saw it last week, and so I got that finished. And this is the Miranda colorway from Oloops, and then this one is just snow. So I'll get that close so you guys can see. Sorry, the glare. Try to get it. So I got that one done. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it's going to be very cute on her. And then I finished the one for her sister. So this one is Ellison's. And again, it's just the snow and Miranda colorway. And I decided not to put a white pom-pom. I, I liked having the darker pom-pom. I just thought it added something fun to it. So I like that their hats themselves are reversed, but they both have the same pom-pom. So I really like them. I think they're going to be really cute on the twins. I can't wait to give them to them. So, and this is a one size fits most pattern. My nieces are eight and I, I do have an eight year old daughter myself, Jillian, um, and it does fit her head like perfectly, but it will also fit my head as an adult. Um, and then it's a little loose on my son who's five. So that's kind of a general idea of how it will fit. So, but I got those done. And then last week I showed you guys the hat that I had finished for Olivia, which was this same hat, but it had the Not My Gumdrop buttons. And I had mentioned that last year I started knitting uh, for her baby brother as well, for my nephew, Ethan. So I got his hat done. And I decided to make him the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits. And I made the, I made the child size because he just turned two. But it does have a little bit bigger noggin, um, so I didn't think the toddler size would be quite big enough. 
and I tried this on my son and it fits him good, but I also tried it on the little kiddo that I nanny who just turned one and it's not too big on him. So I think it'll be fine. But anyway, this is the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits. And I knit this using Mad Tosh Vintage, which is just 100% superwash wool in worsted. And this is the Esoteric colorway. And you guys, I've actually never knit the Barley Hat. I love this hat. It was very easy to knit. I think it would look great with a variegated yarn as well. I love the way this colorway knit up. I love it so much that I'm gonna have to make more of these. I think I think my husband needs one. I think my son needs one. I think I need one. <laughs> I have this really beautiful dark brown skein from Neighborhood Fiber Company that I think think would look amazing with this hat. But I also, the colorway that I dyed for the October um, Halloween, yeah, for my Halloween collection, which is the Goblins and Ghouls, is a really um, neutral, it's like, it's white with little pops of like gold and silver and like toffee color. I think this one would be really pretty with that too. So yeah. But anyway, so I got that done. And again, I made the toddler, no, excuse me, the child size, and I used um, US size eights, my higher, higher sharps, my circulars. So I got that done. And so fast, uh, like day and a half. And it probably would have been less, but we had stuff going on. So recommend that for sure. Okay, now, other things I'm working on, again, still all just for Christmas. In my super cute bag from Quilt Knit Crafts, which you can find on Etsy. So I have moved all of my current projects into Christmas bags, and I was thinking about moving this one, but then I realized that there are these little white things that kind of look like snowflakes. You see that right there? So I was like, you know, I think I'm going to keep it because this bag kind of matches the yarn. And that always makes me really happy. I love it when my yarn and my bags kind of match, so I just kept it in there. But... Again, that's from Quilt Knit Crafts. You can find her on Etsy. And I love the inside. These are my son's socks. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you got to see um, a toe one morning. And then the next day, I had knit like nine inches and I showed a picture of it at soccer. And I was cruising. I was like, I love tube socks for kids. This is So this is the Tube Socks for Kids by Jane Richmond. And it was going so fast. The largest size, I believe, on the Tube Socks for Kids by Jane Richmond count, calls for a 48 stitch count, which is what I had done for my son. And I tried it on him when I had just done a couple inches. And it fit fine. It was good. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep going. It looked a little small to me, but I'm like, you know, it fit. I think we'll be okay. So that night after I had knit nine inches and only had a couple more to go before I could put the cuff on, he was asleep and so I snuck up to his room and tried it on him again. And it fit over his foot fine, but it was really snug in the heel. So I was like, it's just not going to work. It's going to be too small. It's not going to fit for very long. I'm going to be really disappointed because he won't be able to wear it for very long, which is the whole point of the tube socks because there's no heel. So they, as their foot grows, they can just keep wearing them. So I was like, okay, what do I do? Do I leave it and not have it fit him or do I strip it out? I chose to rip it out, which made me <laughs> really, really sad, but I did. So I ripped it out and I decided to cast on 56 stitches instead, which I know is quite a jump from 48, but it's a tiny bit loose on him but I think it'll be perfect because I think it'll fit him longer. So it's not going nearly as fast as it was before. It's still going pretty fast, but not as fast as it was. So, but I have managed to get quite a bit done. I'm at about seven, almost seven inches now. So I'm almost back to where I was. The pattern only calls for like, I think a one inch cuff and I'm gonna do, I think like a two. So it'll still be a little bit longer. But so this is the Noah colorway that I dyed after my son. And as I mentioned, it's similar to my husband's, but it doesn't have brown. It has the gray. So and I'm using my beautiful leaf progress keeper that I got in my swap package. 
Sorry about the chipping for your polish, guys. I need to redo my nails. But I'm really, I'm really, really loving the way the color is knitting. And I'm knitting these on my Haya Haya Sharps, my circulars. I believe they're my size twos. Yeah, they're my twos. So I generally knit all my socks on a two. So, and then I will be putting this really pretty silvery gray, like the gray that's in there, as the cuff. So I'm excited for these. I think he's really going to like them. He was pretty funny when I was sneaking into his room while he was asleep trying to try him on his foot, and he like kept flinching because I think I was tickling him. <laughs> I was trying really hard not to, but it just, like I said, it looked, it looked a little small, and I probably should have stopped way before I did because the whole time I was knitting it up, I kept having that like argument in my head of, yeah, but I tried it on him and it was okay, but it looks really small, but I tried it on him. I, I just need to accept that when I have a gut feeling about my knitting, I should listen to myself. I don't always tend to do that, and I, I need to because nine times out of ten, my gut feeling about something, whether it's the way the color is knitting up or, you know, the needle size, or it's just I generally tend to have to rip it out or I end up not liking it because I should have listened to myself. So I should have, but like I said, I within a day and a half of ripping it out. Yeah, I was kind of almost back to where I was. So maybe a day. A day. Yeah, so. So that's going on in there. And then in here, which is my cute little penguin bag from Lip Syncing Ladybug, which I can't get any more, which makes me sad. They're no longer around. There's a really cute little red polka dot. I am working on a grandma's favorite dishcloth. Just in some I think it might just be the sugars and cream cotton. I don't remember. I'll link it in the show notes. I honestly don't remember, guys. Sorry. But it's this really beautiful, like, navy blue. And I'm making these. I mentioned a couple months ago that I wanted to make a whole bunch of washcloths for my aunt for Christmas because she grew up getting these handmade washcloths from my great aunt, Marguerite. And has commented a couple of times that she really loves them. And so I had this fun idea to make her like seasonal ones because she always goes all out for holidays. And one of the places that she always remembers to decorate is, is her bathroom. And so I thought it would be a lot of fun to make her some cute seasonal washcloths. So I'm making a winter set and a fall set and a spring set and a summer set. Well, I'm hoping to make, <laughs> to make them all. So. So I've got this one going. So keep working away on that. Okay. My last whip that I'm working on is in my beautiful bag from Amy. This was last year for Harry Potter, we did a three month long swap and so you had the same partner for all three months and each month had to be kind of themed after the holiday. And my partner, my dear sweet friend Amy, made me this bag. I am goofy, you guys. If I get bags from people or I buy bags and they come with little tags, I a lot of times will keep the tag on there. So I still have the tag that came on it and it says made with love and it's a cute little heart. And then on the other side it just says Merry Christmas, Lydia. And I love that. But it's just got this really beautiful, like, red canvas bottom. And then these really cute Santa Clauses. And fun Christmas tree fabric on the inside. So, I love this bag. And in here, I have Emma's Christmas present. Woohoo! I am knitting the Ollivander Shawl by Kay Jones. 
picture of it. I am so in love with this pattern, you guys. I cast onto it, is it yesterday? No, Wednesday. I cast onto it on Wednesday and worked on it for a couple hours in the evening and have already gotten through almost all of the sections that are on the first page of pattern notes. Um, and I'm loving it. It's so easy to memorize. It's just a relaxing knit and I'm, I'm just truly enjoying it. So again, that's the Ollivander Shawl by Kay Jones of Bakery Bears fame. And I am using these two colors. So I'm using this gray, which has these little speckles, if you can see them, of like green and purpley red. So kind of like a burgundy and gold. I love it. And then it's just different tones of gray. And this is the Heirloom Roses. And this skein, which is Remember to turn on the light. So, here's my progress so far, you guys. <laughs> I love it so much. Let me get a. There we go. I think my daughter is going to freak out because the bright colors are absolutely her and she also really likes gray so I think she's going to love it and if you can see I really like how in the gray section the colors are popping and it's like it's almost as if you took all the colors that were in the variegated and stuck them into the gray so I'm really really loving it And I've got my sweet little snowflake progress keeper on there, which actually came on this bag from Amy. So I think that's really pretty. And I do believe that she, I think she made that. I think that's what she told me. So I still have quite a few sections to go, I think. I have, let's see, where am I? One, two... Yeah, so I have 10 uh, sections to go, so you could just continue to stripe it in this manner. So I have 10 more of these to go, and then I have the ribbed edging, which will be done in the gray. So I'm super excited for this. I can't wait to give it to her. I think she's really, I think she, I truly do just think she's going to love it. So. I'm hoping to get that done here soon because her best friend has been asking me for months now to make her a shawl. And if I can, I'd really love to get that done for Christmas as well. So we shall see. Okay, I think that's is that it. Yep. So that's it for my current works in progress and whips. I do have some planning I was going to show you guys. So last week I had mentioned that I was going to knit the charade socks for my daughter Jillian out of her colorway. And I had forgotten to bring hers, her colorway down here so I was going to show it to you. So it's being housed in my sweet little gumdrop wonderland bag from Suburban Stitcher, which came in a kit last year. And so Jillian's colorway is this. So this is Jillian, which is this really pretty pink and coral and cantaloupe and kind of this plummy purple. And then her cuff will be the pretty coral. So, so that is hers. And again, I'm going to knit the charade socks and I'm very excited about them I keep seeing pictures of them on Instagram and I really love them I might convert mine though to do them toe up because I do believe that they're a cuff down 
pattern, so I think I'm going to do my toe up. And then I have this sweet little fawn progress keeper that I'm going to use on her socks, which I think is super sweet. And then, so I will have my husband's socks done. Um, those will be Jillian's. I just showed you guys Noah's. And then last week I showed you Emma's, the blueberry waffle. I do think I am going to rip Emma's out and I think knit them toe up on my circulars. It's just taking too long to knit them on the double pointed needles. And I really, really want to get everyone's socks done. That is the one knitting project that I had told myself I wanted to have done. It's like last year was, it was the hats. I wanted to make all three of them matching East St. Nicholas hats for the kids. And this year I would love for everyone to have the socks. So if I managed to get all of my kids' socks finished, then I thought it would be fun to cast onto a pair of socks for me because I would be the only one that didn't have socks knit out of my colorway. So if I can get them done, then I will probably also cast onto mine which this is the Lydia colorway. It's got burnt orange and plum and really dark charcoal. And then this fun section of mustard with like navy and gray speckles. And so I will cast on and hopefully get mine done as well. And I do believe, I think I have, yeah, I have a plum color, a semi-solid upstairs in my office that I think I would do for my cuff. So that color. Because I just thought that would be super fun to have. My kids all have socks that were dyed, knit out of the colorway that I dyed for them, and then my husband and I had to have ones that were dyed after his name and my name as well. So, so we'll see. That's not 100% a priority, as these wouldn't be a gift. I would just wear them on Christmas Day with everybody else, but it would be fun. So, okay, so that's actually it for my knitting, you guys, which is kind of crazy. It seems like I've done a lot, and I feel like I've done a lot, but it's not really a whole lot to show you. But I do have some penny post, and then I have prizes for our first month of Harry Potter. So, we'll do penny post first. Okay, so last week I was looking at, was it last week? No, the week before. I was looking at Instagram and I saw this post. Oh shoot, I never remember from who now. And there was this skein of yarn and I instantly fell in love with it. And I was like, that needs to be in my life. I have to have it. And so I clicked on the link, found the seller, went over and there were a couple of them left. And so I was like, mine sold, coming home with me. So this is from Knitsomniac Designs on her sparkly sock, which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina, 438 yards. And this is the He Who Walks Beyond the Rose. So before I show you the yarn, here's her tag. Okay, ready? Do you guys see this? It is 100% like, have mercy. <laughs> it's all I can think of. Like the second it showed up in the mail, that was all I could think of was Jesse from Full House. I just, I love this colorway. It is stunning. The sparkle in it is amazing. These rusty oranges are just totally my thing. I am, I'm loving it. I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'm thinking it's going to have to be something for my head or my neck. I just, I love it so much. And I do believe I'll have to put her shop link in the show notes because I, can't, I honestly can't remember if she's on Etsy or not. Part of me wants to say she's not. So I'll put the shop link in my show notes. But again, that's Knitsomniac. So I just, I'm in love. And then also in the mail this week, 
I got my kit from, this is the, the kit collaboration with Carrie of Freckled Whimsy, Stacy from Mustache Yarns, and Martha from Tuft Woolens. So this is the Freckled Whimsy bag, you guys can see the hot pink. I have, I don't know, probably, probably five or six of Carrie's bags, you guys. I love them. Absolutely love them. And this is by far, I think, my favorite one I've ever gotten from her. I love this gray canvas bag, and these apples are seriously the sweetest thing ever. I just, I love them. I especially love that one. And, is there one on that side? No. This one right here. I just... I'm so in love with this bag. Just love it. And then the inside is purple. So what can be more perfect than that? Okay. And then in this kit was the Perfect Sock Self-Striping from Mustache Yarns. And this is the Apple Picking colorway. And it says it has one stripity stripe and one tonal stripe and this is a 75 25 merino nylon blend 440 yards of fingering weight and, uh, look you guys i just love it it's these beautiful pinks and turquoises and greens and purples and grays and like mustard yellow so that's stacy's logo and if you look right there, it shows you how it'll knit up. Which I just think is beautiful. It's a little like, um, almost like Harvest Rainbow in a way, because it has the purples and the pinks. Um, but then it has like the really pretty burnt orange and mustard. So... I might have to save it until next year for fall. We shall see. I still haven't actually had a chance to knit with the other one that came in the last kit I got, the egg one. And then I got a caramel apple sucker, which is, this is the red Macintosh, which I love these suckers. I didn't know they had, honestly, red ones. I always find the green ones. I didn't know it came with red ones. And then a luxury bath bar from Tuft Woolens in the Lavender apple, which smells amazing. I love the, I love that you totally get both fragrances. It's like, down here I definitely have apple, but up here I definitely get lavender. So, you guys can find Tough Woolens at toughwoolens.com, and if you haven't, ever purchased like run don't walk and head on over there she's got sock soap and bath bars and lotions it's amazing and then this one is the lavender apple sock soap and I just love her packaging you guys I think it's great and same thing with this one this one to me has a little bit more of the apple than the lavender, but you can definitely tell that they're both there. And then the same scent in the Lanolin Rich Hand and Body Balm, which I love these. They almost look like a little stick of miniature deodorant. And they're just great. You just rub them on. And I think my favorite thing about these is that they really do help moisturize my hands, but they don't make them like greasy and slippery like regular lotion. And see with this one, I definitely get the lavender. The apple is there too, but yeah, lavender for sure. So this was a, a wonderful kit. I saw it and just knew I had to have it. So I was very pleased with that. I'm so in love with this bag and the yarn and the soap. I just, I love it. It's so great. So, so that came. Okay, I think I'm going to get a drink of my tea really quick, guys. It's a little chillier out here in said...
construction garage than it was last week. Which is funny because it's really sunny today. So This is my beautiful handmade mug. My grandmother actually made this. Oh, probably 20, 30 years ago at this point. I love this mug. And I'm drinking English Tea Shop chocolate superberry burst tea which I love and I'm so grateful to wonderful friends and podcast viewers who sent me so much of it because now I get to drink it all the time so that's great okay um so dancing dye pots as I mentioned I don't actually have any yarn to show you but I do want to let you all know that my winter and Christmas collection will be coming out next week on the 12th of November. It's kind of fun. I'm going to be bringing back some past Christmas colorways and then I have some fun new Christmas colorways that are just, well, more just winter colorways that are just inspired by, I don't know, just the colors of winter and things that make me think winter in general. And then I have some really fun like movie quote Christmas skeins that I think are a lot of fun. So those will be going up in the shop next week. So be looking for those. And I currently have spots for the next round of club subscriptions open and those will stay open until December 10th. And as I mentioned last time, those will all be Greek mythology themed. So if you wanna check those out, pop on over to the shop and give them a look. Okay, prizes. Harry Potter, are you guys ready? This is our first round of prizes that get to go out for Harry Potter 2016. I'm super excited. All right, so there's going to be two winners for detention. There was a winner for the September um, posts and then one for the October ones. And I apologize, guys, because there are so many threads and so many posts in each thread, I can't do that on the podcast. I can't random number generate on the podcast, so I do do it ahead of time. Um, okay, so for December's, excuse me, September's detention, we went from post 2 to post 199, and random gem number generator chose post 148, which was Julie Pooley 71. Yay, Julie! So, Julie, my friend, you get to pick one pattern of your choice from me and then one pattern of your choice um, from anyone else on Ravelry that is up to $5. So, once you see this, please just message me and let me know which two patterns you would like, and I will go ahead and get those sent to you. Okay, now October's detention winner was from post 200 to post 309, and random number generator selected post 306, which is Holly Annie 1217. So, congrats. You are winning. This set of stitch markers, which has the Hogwarts colors. So, all of the house colors and the beautiful owl from Jason Inth. And these little mini skeins from Delectable yarns in the house colors. Sorry, there's a really bad glare. I'm trying to get you there. So if you could just message me with your address and that you saw this, I'll get those sent to you. So congrats. Okay. For the cursed child thread, um random number generator chose post number 56 which is Amy Loris, A-M-M-I-E-L-O-R-I-S. And you are winning this beautiful skein of graffiti from Spun Right Round. This is on her Snappy Socks, which is 75% Superwash Coriadale, 25% Nylon, 434 yards. The graffiti colorway. which I think is a lot of fun. So if you would message me and let me know that you saw that, I'll get that sent to you. Okay, 
For Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them thread, it was post number 11, which is Ninja Chickens. Yay! And you are winning this absolutely beautiful skein from Stress Knits on her favorite sock, which is 80% merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards, and this is always the tone of surprise, which I love. So you are winning this. So if you would just message me and let me know, I'll get that sent to you as well. Okay, our main challenge winner, which was for the glide over the stars, no, clouds, glide over the clouds, um, was post number 99, which is Katie Jo, who made a beautiful little owlet sweater. So congrats, Katie Jo. You are winning really fun stuff. So, you are winning this Harry Potter coloring book that was donated by Lucy. And the wand pen. This skein of yarn from me, which is called Flighty Temptress Adventure. This beautiful witch and spooky eyes bag from Stephanie of Stitch Marks the Spot, which is actually a little bit bigger than it shows because it's folded over here, so it's it's a large size bag. That's from Stephanie. And last but not least, you are winning the Albus Dumbledore pop figurine, since this quote was from Albus himself. So congratulations, Katie Joe. if you would message me and send me your address, I'll get your stuff sent to you. So congratulations to all of our winners. You guys all had amazing and beautiful projects. I was blown away at how many of you knit my socks. It was a lot of fun seeing all of the different colorways um, knit up with it. And I'm excited to see what everyone's going to do for... November. I'm loving all of the Ollivander shawls that are already being knit up. I think they're a lot of fun and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with for um, our two extra credit challenges as well. So I probably won't see you guys again before the December challenges are announced because those will go up November 15th. Um, so if you have any questions about those once they're posted, please feel free to ask in the Oloops Great Hall thread and either myself or one of my moderators will go ahead and get that answered for you. So, all right. I think that's it, you guys. I'm hoping to have lots more Christmas projects finished when you guys see me next, which will be in two weeks again. That seems like it's a good time frame for me. So... So until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you when I see you. Happy knitting. Bye.